Yes, 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 yes. Today's video reveal, we have the UE2 X1 single board computer. Now, before I get fully in deep to all the specs, you guys know a couple of weeks ago, I said I went on a little bit of a hiatus to find out a little bit more about emulation, like where are the bottlenecks? You know, why couldn't we run NFL Blitz, Killer Instinct on Orange Pi, Raspberry Pi 5 or Raspberry Pi 4? You guys know the deal. And so after doing all of my research, I found out exactly where the bottleneck was in the hiccup. Fast forward another week later, I got an email from Ameridroid showing this bad boy. I was like, wow, these were the specs that I needed, all for $109. This single board computer is $109. It's an Intel Celeron processor X86, 11th gen Jasper Lake N5105. This will fully do everything that I needed to do. Nintendo Switch, Yuzu runs fine, PlayStation 2, NFL Bits, Killer Instinct, all that other good stuff. But this is what I was looking for even before I knew that I needed it. So the company was kind enough, I reached out to them, was kind enough to send this over to me for review. And not just this, but they also sent me this LCD stand here for multi-angle support. And then they also included this 5.7 inch touchscreen to go along with it. So we will be digging into this fully. My personal opinion right now, this is the 2023 best single board computer of the year. We have it here finally in the Daikin household. Now, I don't know what they're going to do as far as mass production. Uh, this was shipped over from China. They shipped this over really fast. Supports 4K, Windows 10, Windows 11, Linux. Has two HDMI displays. One of them is a mini. Four HDMI, I'm sorry, four SATA ports. I'm sorry, four USB ports, two USB 3.0s, two USB 4.0, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi uh, 5.0 and 6.0 uh, above. Integrated GPU, I believe the GPU on this is about 600, maybe 800 or so. HDMI 2.0 micro HDMI, of course, so we could do uh, two different split screens. And of course it has the ethernet port adapter, but this is the holy grail right now for a lot of you gamers out there looking to find something cheap, affordable, inexpensive. As you guys know, there's a rising cost right now for the Pi units and other single board computers. So roughly you're looking at anywhere between $100 and $127. Raspberry Pi 5 is coming out. Actually, you know, the base price on that's about 80 bucks. Now you have something. And then of course, by the time you get all the accessories, you know, you're looking at about a good $99 plus maybe a charger and a couple of other things. But this already has the heatsink, already has the fan. I'm excited to debut it here on the channel. I'm going to be doing a number of uh, reviews. Uh, other members of the Supreme team are going to be getting one. I will be shipping those out as well. Oh, my God. I can't believe it's here. Finally in this household. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. You know what time it is. So this shipped out a few days ago from China. And um, it was packed nicely well. I mean, normally, you know, I get some stuff and it's been, you know, tattered, beat up and all that other good stuff. It took less than a week to get here. And I was kind of surprised that it did come with a few extras. So the base price of this is $109. That is for the four gigabyte model. Uh, this particular model that they did send over to me has 256 gigabytes of eMMC storage already built in here. Just take a look at that. Just take a look at this massive board. In fact, where's my Orange Pi? Got a quick size comparison here. So this is the Orange Pi 5B. It's a little bit bigger, as you guys can see. Again, uh, the Orange Pi 5 cost me 127. Then of course I had to buy the additional heat seek your fan. However, again, that's, that's ARM. I mean, it's been a rough, ride trying to get uh that chip and everything you know fully working right with let's say RetroPie, but this will run everything all of your computer programs natively no additional optimizations needed i mean you could probably overclock this a little bit if you wanted to but all your programs steam word after effects uh, your adobe programs everything will fully function on here so these are just a quick look right now at the ports 
nice form factor. In fact, here is my Raspberry Pi 4. I know it's in a case, but you can kind of see exactly how uh, it measures up. Had to buy all these additional accessories for it. It's like they took this thing and said, hey, let's go ahead and just dump everything on here. Uh, give everybody all the full connections that they do need. All right, so for the board itself, uh, they have different variants. It has anywhere between four to uh, 16 gigabytes. They have a four gigabyte, eight gigabyte, and 16 gigabyte that has no EMMC storage. Again, the four gigabyte starts out at $109. The four gigabyte, 64 gigabyte EMMC starts out at 119 low cost. Then it goes up to eight gigabytes, 64 gigabytes of storage for 134. 8 gigabytes 128 for 139 and then the uh the one that i'm currently holding right now which is an 8 gigabyte 256 is 156 dollars so uh this is a good price range for what you're looking at and then if you want the 16 gigabyte 256 maybe a little bit of overkill if you're looking for something a little bit entry level but this one that would retail for you at 219 dollars so let's go over some of the specs here i want to show you guys all the inputs outputs exactly how this thing works all right so we'll start right here at the top over here at the top left we have a poe header which will be good for hooking up some additional devices uh, we have our micro sd card the micro sd card is only for storage you can't boot off of the micro sd you have another poe header here micro hdmi I got one of those cables laying around here. This is the one that's on the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you guys already have a connection for that, that is already there. Then you have a microphone uh, adapter. So if you guys want to use this for live stream recording and streaming, um, I saw another video. I don't know the YouTuber's name, but the microphone quality was exceptionally well uh, for this type of device. So you're getting an all-in-one bundle. All right, quick mic check. We're recording directly from the UE2 X1 4K single board computer. It is approximately about three feet away from me right now. The fan is spinning. I'm recording in 4K while I'm editing my video. The microphone quality should be pretty great. I know the microphone quality is directly at the bottom of the single board computer. This is a great device. I wonder, though, if there's a way to make sure the microphone is always turned off, but uh, you don't run across too many single board computers that have a microphone underneath it or comes equipped with one. You also have over here, you have your reset and power located here as your additional power button. Uh, that way you can guys can just turn it off and then turn it on directly from the board itself. A lot of the boards are kind of integrating that now. Then you have a power uh, adapter here if you guys want to plug in an additional battery. Uh, if I don't think I have my battery laying around here, but if you guys want to get an external battery, this also helps maintain the time and date. So every time you turn it off and on, uh, it represents that battery that you would typically have on any type of motherboard device. We have our DC power jack. I believe this is 12 volts, three amps. I didn't have anything laying around the house. So I'm glad they sent that over. Um, I thought maybe one of the other single board computer ones would work. However, uh, it doesn't. We have our DC power here, our LED lights, HDMI 2.0, a headphone jack, 3.5 headphone jack with uh, socket wires. And I know some single board computers have removed the headphone jack, but keep in mind, this is also used for video if you have the proper adapter. So uh, that's really unfortunate that some other single board computers are removing that. But fortunately, you're getting all that for this price. You have your power key. You have your SPK and LED option right here. And then of course you have some additional plugs for USB one, USB two, and your UART one, two, and three. And then of course we have another DC power jack uh, right here. This one is, uh, I think it's uh, 12, 12 volts, I believe it is. And then we have another SPI adapter here. If you guys wanna hook up some additional peripherals, and we have another pin header directly for your GPIO. And the fan is already hooked up and included. Again, 
Uh, your standard price, this comes included with the heat seeking fan, which would typically cost you about uh, $12 to $15 if you go with another retailer. So for $109, you're getting all of this uh, fully bundled together. Now on the back side, we have our M.2 uh, port here for our M.2 uh, MVE drives. That goes along here. I know it's kind of hard to see. I'll lay it out this way. So this is our M.2 slide if you want to add in additional storage. And then we also have our adapter port for our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that the company was kind enough uh, to go ahead and send over. Here at the top left, we have our MIPI DSI display. So we will be using this to hook up our seven inch uh, LCD monitor. Then we have another port for SATA connection. That's, that's pretty phenomenal, that's awesome. Over here, we have our RTC connector. And then of course here down here at the bottom, we have our uh, microphone. So for $109, this is fully loaded. I expect great things from this. Um, again, they sent this over for review, but all the opinions and everything that you guys hear are my own. In fact, I had to reach out to them to, have, uh, to see if they would sponsor this video and send one over to review. I had to have this. And I know some of you follow me in some of the other groups. Glad to see that you guys uh, have got this purchase. So uh, we're going to work on some tri-booting. Not today in today's video. This is going to be a quick showcase in terms of what this can do. But this is the future. This is where most of the emulation guys are going. Uh, if you're an arcade modder looking for something very low profile, this can run directly off of a battery. I have a 67 watt battery laying around somewhere. So uh, we're going to do some cloud gaming with this. But the biggest interest that I have as far as emulation, because we know emulation and game playing really pushes the technology. I know it already runs PS2. I know it runs Yuzu, but I want to see if this can run Technoparrot. And so I know the specs for Technoparrot really aren't listed too much, so I want to see if it can handle it. Uh, NFL Blitz, Killer Instinct, we already know that can run that. The system resources on that was very low. That was all an emulation issue between ARM and x86. But... This is where the emulation community is going currently. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in. I'm gonna show you guys a few of the other accessories that were sent over, and then we'll get you guys set up and I'll walk you through some of the processes and some of the things that really impressed me because I've been telling a lot of the guys who've been in the single board computer business now for a little bit, you know, we've taken the Raspberry Pi 5 or the 4 and then the Orange Pi 5 as far as it can really go. Uh, but it's limited. Uh, with RetroArch is limited with ARM compared to x86. There's not really much development you need for this. This is very similar to any uh, PC you buy at a store. And this could be integrated. Like if you have a 3D printer, um, obviously home arcade cabinet or any type of uh, programs, this will automatically work instantly. So uh, let's go ahead and break out some of the other accessories and then we'll go ahead and get hooked up. So I did speak to the company. This is the seven inch LCD screen uh, that's in here. Um, they do include standoffs. So this currently does not have any cases. They are working on a case. So for the time being, you will have to use uh, standoffs. Um, I'm not sure if these come with it, but it should be on their website. So we'll take a look at that before the end of the video. Got an instruction manual here. Let's go ahead and open it up. What do you see? They're saying. All right, just shows you how to hook up the uh, MIPI connectors. All right. And down here at the bottom, we also have the EMMC connectors. This is for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, if you do want to opt to get the seven inch touchscreen, that is currently selling for $30. And the additional Wi-Fi module that you see here is on sale right now for $15. Uh, 99. It comes with all of these little goodies here as well. But the full package are running about 165 altogether. All right, so we here we have our ribbon cable, and then of course it looks like they included an additional adapter here. This goes directly to the motherboard, I believe directly for power. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Here we have our touchscreen display. And again, like I said, I think this is five points. 
pretty nice. We'll leave the film on here for right now. And then, of course, it looks like it has this additional bracket. I've done a tutorial before on another type of uh, LCD display where it was all touchscreen. And uh, the cool thing is if we do get into some emulation, a lot of games are supported by touchscreen. So we will be uh, experimenting uh, with that. Now, if you are looking to take this board on the go, they also have an additional 4G LTE module adapter uh, that you can purchase for this. Obviously, you would plug it in here. Uh, this could be extremely portable with the battery. And with that additional LTE module, uh, which resells for $40, you can access the internet and take this wherever you wanna go. So you don't see too many modules or SBCs that are included with this. But again, uh, this is a big powerhouse. I expect most of the arcade community to kind of migrate over to this. Everybody is kind of PC oriented. And so for this price, as far as what we're gonna get, same form factor, highly competitive now. And um, a few weeks ago, I sent over uh, a bunch of links to guys in regards to some of the Atomic Pi units. And so you really couldn't find an Intel chip uh, x86 in a single board computer format, and unless it was somewhere around 250 to $300. So. Coming down to 109, and I think there was another com computer or something I saw for like $100. This is almost pretty much putting it on par with like the Raspberry Pi. Obviously, it's on par with the Orange Pi, some of the other single board computers. And so uh, we'll really have to see because this is obviously going to do more. I know some of you are probably wondering right now, how does this compare to the Raspberry Pi 5? How does this compare to the Orange Pi 5? Which one's more powerful? A lot of times, it's not so much about more power, but physical optimization in the environment. This is going to give you more than any other single board computer uh, in regards to ARM, even though they may be more powerful in some cases, but again, it's all about optimization and how it performs. So uh, like for example, right now on the Orange Pi, uh, Steam doesn't work natively. We had to find some workarounds and things like that, but everything as far as Steam is fully supported on here. So. Uh, we'll have to see exactly how the market does in terms of this being really competitive, like say with the Orange Pi 5 or I would say the Raspberry Pi 5. I do expect this to be a high content contender versus the Raspberry Pi 5 because they've been raising their prices and these have been coming down. So uh, they may be in a little bit of trouble. They may lose a little bit of market share once the word like something like this comes uh, gets around. So let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and set up the operating system. I believe it may be already uh, preloaded. And as far as I know with this company, you have to use their operating system uh, for their kernel because I believe it already has the drivers. If you guys try to install your own Windows 10 or Windows 11, it's gonna fail on here. Uh, thanks again for Pi Maniac. He's been showing a lot of videos uh, in regards to this particular unit. So let's go ahead and have some fun now because I can't, I, I can't wait anymore. Let's go. All right, so here's another quick look in case you guys want to take a screenshot of it. And then we have the bottom here. I know some of you have asked me, how do you take off the heat sink? And honestly, as of right now, I don't know if you can. I'm not going to fiddle around with it, but it doesn't look like it's clamped on. But uh, this is a pretty great device. I mean, it's not too heavy. It's not too robust. It'll pretty much fit anywhere if you want to tape this to the back of your monitor. But before we go forward, um, I know there are currently no cases for this. As I said uh, previously, the company is working on producing some cases. They did say, however, they included some standoffs. So I'm not sure if the standoffs I'm using was specifically made for this board. I do believe that they were made for the seven inch LCD screen. However, we're gonna use them. We wanna make sure that we can get some type of uh, footing on here so that way it doesn't set flush against the table. So we're gonna go ahead and open these up uh, before we get this thing plugged in. Uh, it's not gonna to be too bad because I'm not using the M.2 uh, right now. I'm not using the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi connector uh, for this video. I'll do that in a separate video. But again, we just wanna make sure we have a good common practice here. I have a couple of pads down. That's really not going to affect it too much. But again, I just want to make sure I get it off of the table because I do plan on putting an M.2 slot uh, hard drive on this single board computer. Now I'm just making sure that I have this on top of my anti-static bag. We just want to make sure that we practice some good safety tips. We're going to hold the screws in 
one by one. And these are again, just some basic standoffs, the typical kind that would come with a computer motherboard. Just get them screwed into place. I'm holding in place with one hand and then screwing again with the other. This will just take you about two minutes, pretty simple, straightforward. And then of course, once we get this installed, we're just gonna go ahead and boot this up. All right, so I got this thing plugged in first. Before you actually plug this thing in and do anything, this thing was starting to get really, really hot. So you wanna make sure you move these wires out of the way. I know they were just kind of sitting there, but I kind of figured it would kind of work uh, once you plug this in. But uh, make sure you move these cables out of the way when you uh, plug this in and make sure that you have them. Uh, I thought they would have been mounted in here when I got them, but this thing's really, really hot. So now the fan is uh, starting to spin. So. Uh, probably a little bit of error on my part, but I figured this thing would have been ready 
as you can see it's kind of touching this wire so we'll just have to move them out of the way or just make sure they stay that way so uh, it's updating right now don't want to touch it so as soon as it's done updating I'm going to turn this thing off get these wires situated I didn't think this would be an issue I've, typically most fans they you know start on their own and wires aren't in the way so that's just kind of one, something to watch out for uh, if you guys choose to get one of these boards all right so i'm just readjusting the fan here uh the wires came up so when the fan was spinning they were getting in the way so uh this is a minor fix but uh, hopefully the company pays attention to this in the future because uh, it wasn't spinning and this thing got really hot and I didn't notice it until I actually touched the HDMI port literally uh, yeah I touched my finger against it and so uh, again easy fix so I'm just going to lift this up readjust the wires and then get back into action I was just letting it do it some updates before I uh, continue the rest of the review all right so as you guys can see it was an easy fix so the wires were kind of, the yellow one primarily was sticking up a little bit. So just had to uh, fold it down there under the little nook. And then I'm just going to feed it through and then get this thing screwed back down. Uh, shouldn't create any more noises and it should spin freely now. Nice and smooth and quiet. All right, let's go ahead and finish the rest of these updates. All right, so we're finally booting into the UE2 X1 4K single board computer. So uh, just to let you guys know, when you do first get this and you do decide to boot up, if you are running Windows or already have Windows installed, it takes roughly about a good hour and a half to two hours to fully load all the updates. Um, I have not tried Linux or Linux Mint yet, but uh, again, we will get, check that out in the near future. Now, I'm sure the question all of you have been wondering is, Keo, can you tell us what does this thing emulate? And so, so far, I have been able to run, run CoinOps, Big Box with LaunchBox, Hyperspin, Steam, Epic Games. Yes, this can play Pinball FX3. I also have the Epic Games launcher. Some of the games will run, such as Roller Coaster Tycoon, several of the other games. We also have the Xbox Microsoft app, so Cloud Gaming runs exceptionally well. In fact, it runs a lot better than the Orange Pi 5. And of course, I've been able to use uh, Scotty Retro's image, if you guys know who that is, uh, his uh, image launched on here as well, as well as Retro Bat light gun image by DL Wing. So if you guys are familiar with some of those front ends, they ran fluently and efficiently without any additional hiccups. Now, as far as emulators, we have been able to run Yuzu, which is the Nintendo Switch emulator, Xbox, the original Xbox, not the Xbox 360. So uh, Zimu uh, will run a lot of the Xbox game uh, libraries that are on here, as well as uh, I think a couple of the Technoparry games uh, will run too. It just really depends. I know there's some graphical issues or there were some video drivers needed for some of the techno paired games. So when you get in here, it's just like your standard Windows PC. You have all of your programs. Uh, it does come unactivated. Now I know if you guys seen parts of this video down here in the bottom right, it has says, please activate Windows. Uh, but for the most part, you will be able to access most of it. <clears throat> you won't be able to change uh, some of the themes are on here. If you, if you have a Windows a non-activation key, but everything runs well. Everything is uh, straightforward and fluid. As you guys have seen earlier, I have uh, posted some videos where I was able to run 4K, 8K, 60 frames per second videos natively directly on this single board computer. Now I know many single board computers will taunt or mention that they could do 4K or 8K. I haven't seen any true 4K or 8K videos. And typically you'll also see uh, videos out there, video reviews where people are uh, running uh, YouTube videos. And 
you know that's fine to a certain extent however those are compressed videos that is not uh uncompressed and so the videos that you guys are watching here uh, are truly 4k 8k dedicated 60 frame per second uh videos that are, are running natively on this single board computer uh, as far as temperatures, the temperature on the Intel Celeron can go up to about 100, I think 105 somewhere degrees. Uh, typically for a standard single board computer, you're looking at about a good 80, I want to say 80, which is typically the throttle limit. So uh, this does come with a really good fan and heatsink. I haven't looked to see if the heatsink is removable, if you could put something else on here. It looks like it may already be clamped to the board, so we'll have to investigate further to see if I could get it a little bit cooler. Uh, Fightcade also works on here, but the emulation overall is great. I haven't had any problems with this. Sound quality is sufficient. Uh, there are, is no development for this. I know a lot of people would say, hey, well, the Raspberry Pi has a bigger commuter, etc., etc., etc. But if you really wanted to compare this apples to apples or apple or oranges to oranges, uh, again, this is Windows X64 natively. So whatever computer programs that you have uh, on your desktop, if you're a PC enthusiast, they will automatically run and they will automatically work on this. There's no development needed. You don't have to wait for a special team to create video drivers. Everything works natively and I can't stress that enough. So some of the fun things that I did have on here, I have all of my Steam apps uh, loaded. I did play a little bit of Half-Life uh, Half Life 2. I also played uh, some Doom. I played some Doom from the original Xbox. But overall, this is really fun. And so for me, the biggest thing is uh, just being able to run a number of different front ends in terms of gaming. Uh, this will obviously, if you're just looking to get something like this, just for some basic computer use, if you're just looking to type up some basic documents, all of that kind of stuff is going to be straightforward just as much as you could do. But considering this single board computer has eight gigs of RAM, or at least this particular version, 256 gigabytes of, uh, of EMC. You can also add an SD card on here. The SD card uh, that can be put on here is not for storage. Uh, I mean, it's only for storage. You can't boot off of it. And then of course, if you want to, you can also add Linux. Now we'll be sending getting some more of these for the Supreme team. We're going to look to see if we could do a tri boot function where you can bounce back and forth between windows and also Linux. Uh, I do know that you will get better performance with Linux because with this version of windows, th you know, there's so many different resources and different programs running in the background. It does kind of eat up into the processor. Now, uh, the other cool thing about this is this does have turbo functionality. So the base clock on this Intel Celeron processor is clocked at two gigahertz. However, it will reach a burst limit up to about 2.8, 2.9, uh, which you guys will see here in this video. So when I open up some of the applications and have some of the games running in the background, you don't have to worry about overclocking because it will adjust incrementally for you based upon the needs of the computer. I want to show you guys what some of the basic specs looks like, what we have running in the background. So you can see in the most idle format, uh, we have roughly of about a good 10, 20 percent. Uh, in some cases, probably about maybe five or six of CPU usage while the computer is idle and nothing's running in the background. Now, if we look at the full performance of this, the GPU is pretty much virtually nothing right now. Uh, CPU, we are clocked at, it is going to adjust, it's going to fluctuate uh, 2.3, go all the way up to 2.8, 2.9 as far as full utilization. Uh, GPU, if you guys know I'm a huge fan, not sorry GPU, but memory, we are at 4 gigabytes out of a total of 8. So if you guys have watched some of my other videos, you do need to have 8 gigabytes worth of memory for emulation. Trust me, you will need that. Uh, a lot of these new environments are taking up some additional RAM, uh, additional shaders are gonna use it. So you're gonna need a little bit more than four just to really kind of get started. But all in all, man, I, I tell you guys, I absolutely love this single board computer. I do not have any issues with it. The only concern I do have is that, or I wish, wishful thinking, was that the GPU was clocked a little bit more to about, uh, Obviously, it's known as four gigabytes of GPU memory. So I want to say, I wish it was about six, maybe 700 in terms of the actual GPU uh, performance speed, which I could get a little bit more out of that. But all in all, I mean, this is a perfect Christmas gift. It's a, it's a great stocking stuffer. Uh, this is probably my favorite single board computer now. I mean, knowing that it's x86 in my arm, it cuts down on a lot of things that we would typically need to do 
in order to get it up and running. But the overall performance is there. But I kind of think I've covered everything here on this UE2 X1 4K single board computer. Uh, they have these available on their direct website. All the links and everything will be included below. You can also buy this directly on Amazon, Ameridroid as well. Uh, I don't think I would really found out about this uh, besides uh, Ameridroid. So definitely want to make sure that we give them a shout out. And then of course, uh, I will be uh, probably gifting these to some of the community. I know I need to do some giveaways, but for $109, entry level price, $14 more than a Raspberry Pi 5, uh, considering the performance, everything that it can do. And I know there's other computers out there such as the B-Link and whatnot, and those are a little bit more, but single board computer, the performance you're gonna get, the price you're gonna get, in my opinion, this is the 2023 best single board computer that you can get on the market right now. Everything is good to go. You have as many peripherals that you can hook up on here, IO, camera sensors, uh, two HDMIs, uh, four USB ports, two uh, HDMI, uh, two USB 2.0s, two USB 3.0s. If you already have a Raspberry Pi device or something very similar, maybe you have a purple Pi, orange Pi, whatever the case might be, but you're, you're a newbie. Maybe you just really want to kind of get into something that's straightforward, uh, cut down a little bit of battery or power on some of the other things that are out there, cloud gaming. This is the one for you. Uh, straightforward, right out of the box, not too much that you need to do. I can't see why anybody would not wanna buy one of these. I mean, small form factor, your peripherals already work, your mouse, your keyboard, your cameras, the drivers can already be integrated with what you already have. But guys, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you give me a, a like, probably subscribe. I know I kept this video a little bit long, but I wanted to make sure I could be as thorough as possible because I don't casually use the word best when I make a reference or referral uh, for a piece of technology that's out there. Not, not everything could be the best, but comparing this to, let's say the Raspberry Pi 5, Orange Pi 5, and some of the other stuff that's out there on the market, even the Rock Pi 5, in my opinion, this is the best one on the market. Full price range, all of the specs, there's nothing not to like about the X1. So. Definitely want to thank the company again for sending this over to me for review. All of these thoughts are my own. I will catch you guys later. Peace out. Make sure you guys all have a great day. Bye-bye.